Hey there, it's Liz from No Trace. I have a ton of selvage edges and other long thin scraps of fabric that I wanna find good uses for. So I decided to turn them into a leaf shaped placemat in this video. It's actually a super simple project. Let me show you how it's done. The placemat that we're gonna be making is about 18 inches wide and about 14 or so inches tall at the tallest point, but you could definitely adjust these measurements. Um, this is just sort of a standard placemat size. In order to make this leaf shaped placemat, we're gonna be using a whole bunch of long thin scraps of fabric and selvage edges. And I have picked out a bunch in shades of green among other colors, but you could definitely use whatever color scheme you want. You could do multicolored, go with browns, whatever speaks to you. I'm also gonna be using about two thirds of a yard for the back of the placemat, but if you wanted to create a quilted look for both sides, you could absolutely do that. And I have about three quarters of a yard maybe a little less of organic cotton batting to attach my scraps onto. You're also going to need some paper to make the pattern piece. Now, I always save the shipping paper that comes in packages that we order online. You could use an old newspaper or you could tape together a few pieces of paper. So let me show you how to make the pattern. It's super easy. So we are going to cut this paper into a rectangle that is 19 inches wide and eight inches tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to size and I'll be right back. Next, we're gonna create the curved edge that you see on the finished placemat. Now, if you wanna make it symmetrical, you could fold your paper in half and draw a curved edge. If you want it to not be symmetrical, you could just freehand draw a curve on your pattern piece. I'm gonna keep it simpler and do a symmetrical curved edge here. So I'm just gonna draw from this topmost point to this folded. So I just folded this in half and I'm just gonna draw a curved line from here to here. And then I'm gonna use my paper scissors, not my nice fabric scissors. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. All right, I got a better marker so you could see this next part a little better. So we're gonna have one pattern piece to use for the right side and the left side of our placemat. So I'm gonna write on here, right side, and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna write left side. And then we are gonna do some rough diagonal lines so that we can kind of keep track as we're sewing which side we're sewing and which way the pieces need to go. So I'm just going to start at the bottom here and just do some rough approximate 45 degree angle lines. This part does not have to be precise, okay? All right, so that's the right side. The pieces are gonna be angled up this way. Now we're gonna flip it over, and on the left side, we want them to also flip up this way. But when we sew, it's gonna, they're gonna be coming different directions, as you can see on the finished piece here. Okay, so here's our pattern piece. Now we're gonna place our pattern piece on top of our batting and actually have two pieces of batting here. We're gonna cut out two of these shapes from the batting and I'm gonna go ahead and line up these edges, get this down near that bottom edge. This is actually a scrappy batting that I pieced together from some smaller pieces. Just wanted to use them up. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and trace this out and then cut out a rough, it doesn't have to be perfect, just sort of a rough approximation of this pattern piece. I'm gonna actually use my um, ruler and 
rotary cutter here. And I'm gonna get a nice straight edge through both layers of the batting. All right, I traced my pattern piece, but I'm also just gonna, I'm just gonna freehand cut it here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Ta-da. Okay, and we'll save this batting for a future project. Oops. Now I'm gonna start placing my strings, my scraps here, including my selvage edges, onto the batting. If you want to pre-plan the pattern, you could do that right now. I've already picked out these colors, so I'm not gonna plan the pattern beyond this, but I do wanna start joining these pieces onto here. And this, it's really helpful if you have a ruler that has a 45 degree angle line. I don't know how well you can see that, but basically it comes off the corner, cuts a 45 degree angle because we want to sew the strips on at a 45 degree angle. Rather than sewing you know, straight across, we're gonna place them and attach them at a 45 degree angle. And sometimes I'm gonna have to join shorter strips together to make it work. So let's start with this piece and then I'm gonna bring my ruler down to the corner here. And I can feel the corner and I'm lining up the edge, the straight edge of my ruler with the straight edge of my cotton batting. And then I'm gonna adjust my piece so I can get a nice 45 degree angle. Let's have to pull it up a little bit. And there, that looks good. So this piece of fabric is running at a 45 degree angle from this straight edge. Now I'm gonna take it over to the machine. Oops, I just moved it. <laughs> I'm gonna take it to the machine and start sewing. All right, at the machine, I am gonna sew this on to the batting first with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I have my stitch length bumped up to a five millimeter stitch length, so it's pretty, um, a pretty long length. So I'm just gonna go, oops, that's not quarter inch. Here we go, let's hold down. I'm gonna add another row of stitches that is five, eight, seven inch away from my first row. And until I am, probably until I'm about five inches away from this raw edge. Okay, I'm just adding two rows of stitches onto this piece because uh, this line is about 5 8 inch away from this raw edge. So it's time to pick a second piece. And let's see, how about this guy right here? So I'm gonna put this right side together and sew it on to my first string of fabric. And I'm gonna join these pieces with a quarter inch seam allowance. And just go all the way down. Then I'm gonna open my piece up and I'm gonna press it with my fingers and add more rows of stitches on top of this piece. So I'll be right back. All right, I have two of the pieces of fabric attached to the leaf pattern. I'm just gonna continue attaching more and more pieces on to here until it's covered. All right, my first half of the leaf is totally covered with selvage edges and little scraps of fabric. So I'm gonna just take a moment and just straighten it up with my rotary cutter and ruler. And then I'll probably also use my scissors to straighten up the curved side. And of course, I'm gonna save these little scraps for a future project. I'm using my pattern piece here and I'm just gonna carefully cut along that pattern piece with my rotary cutter, but you could also trace and cut with your scissors. So whatever you are most comfortable with. 
Just gonna get this last little bit. And then we can set this side apart for now and get started on the second piece. All right, so here is the other piece. Now these are symmetrical, but if you cut your leaves, your leaf halves not symmetrical or asymmetrical, you wanna make sure that you used your pattern piece to find the top and the bottom. And what I wanna do now is just go through the same process of joining strips onto this batting. But now, of course, I want them to come at a 45 degree angle going this direction rather than, you know, that direction. That wouldn't make any sense. So I'm just gonna go through all these same steps that I did for my first half with this half and I will show you what to do next. So hang on just a sec. All right, I finished the other side of the placemat and it's already looking really cute. I'm super excited. So what we're gonna do next is place the two halves right sides together and then sew them up with a half inch seam, allo seam allowance just along this one straight edge. I've got a couple pins in here to hold, help hold these pieces together. And I put my stitch length back on my regular setting, which is around three millimeters. And I'm just going to sew. Make sure to do a back stitch. And then go all the way down. And make sure to back stitch at the end here too. Okay, the two pieces are joined. And I do wanna take a second and trim this seam allowance so that the placemat doesn't have a ton of bulk at the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down to about a quarter inch or so. And of course, I'm saving my tiny bits. I'm gonna put them in my tiny bit bin and eventually they'll become stuffing or repurposed in some creative way. After I've trimmed the seam allowance, I wanna take a moment and press the seam nice and flat. Again, this will just help the placemat not have as much bulk in the middle. It's a little bit fussy, so, you know, if you don't have much patience, you could skip this step, but it is a good idea to just get it as flat as you can with the iron. Just take, take your time and open and iron it. It's a little hard, but it's worth it. Once this seam is pressed, I'm gonna flip the whole thing over and give it a good press with the iron. By the way, if you like my ironing mat, which people often ask about, I have a link in the description box where you can find this ironing mat. And if you're getting any value out of this video, I would love for you to join my channel. Just click on the join button to learn more. I'm also gonna trim, now that it's ironed, I'm gonna trim off the little tips here at the points. And then we're gonna use this finished part of the mat as a pattern for our other fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this fabric up and I'm going to get it nice and flat. And then I'm going to use my leaf as the pattern piece and I'm gonna trace it out onto this fabric, and then I'm gonna cut it out from the fabric. I'm just gonna use my, excuse me, my tailor's chalk to do a little tracing. And I do wanna try to be pretty careful. So give me a second. You probably can't see my yellow chalk line, but I promise it's there. And now I will just cut right along that line. All right, my pattern piece is cut out. So now I'm ready to join these two pieces together. I do wanna point out that if you would like to do binding tape along the raw edge, you could definitely finish your placemat with um, bias tape, bias binding tape. I am going to join them the way I did on this first version. So I'm gonna put the right sides together. This is a solid, so not really right or wrong, but if you have a print, you want right sides together, line up the edges and pin it together. 
And then I'm gonna stitch them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I wanna make sure that I leave an opening on one of these straighter areas of about four inches so I can turn my whole placemat right side out. So let me take care of that and show you how it goes. All right, over at the machine, I am starting on this sort of straighter side of my placemat and I'm gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance approximately. You can do it a little bit larger if you want and I wanna make sure to backstitch at the beginning. When I reach one of the tips, I just leave my needle down and then lift the presser foot, swing the placement around and just keep coming down this side. Before I move on to the next step, I'm gonna take a minute and make sure I got both layers in my seam all the way around my placemat. Okay, seam looks good. So I am going to take a minute and trim it down a little bit here and there with, um, you know, maybe closer to an eighth of an inch. And I also am going to cut some notches into this seam so that there's a little bit less bulk here when we turn it right side out. I do wanna point out that I am not trimming the seam allowance at the opening because it's gonna be easier to iron and sew it closed if there's a little bit of fabric to work with. I just wanna show you how I'm cutting the notches into the seam. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just sort of cut a little triangle close to the seam, but not cutting the stitches. And I'm just gonna do that in a few spots around the seam to get rid of some of the bulk. All right, I've notched around the edge. So now we are ready to turn it right side out. One of my favorite parts. And in this step, I'm gonna use a chopstick, my handy dandy chopstick, to push out the seams so that they are as flat as possible. So I'm just, I just put my chopstick on the inside and I'm just sort of pushing along the seam here to try to get it as flat as I can before I take it to the iron. And now I'm ready to iron. I'm gonna start with the easy part here and just press out the seam really well. You could probably use a little steam if you want here. And then when I get to my opening, I'm gonna make sure to fold the fabric in and then iron it. So right here, we wanna get this fabric folded and lined up the best that we can and then press it in place and pin it in place. Otherwise it'll start to move around on you again. Okay. So that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and press. All right, I'm ready to top stitch. I'm gonna put my stitch length back at the longest, so five millimeters. And I'm just gonna start along one of the sides here. And just take my time and sew with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. The placemat is done. I really love it. I think it's gonna make an excellent addition to our tabletop. And if you got any value out of this video, I'd love for you to check out my membership. You just click on the join button below this video. And if you want another tutorial for another leaf shaped item, I'm gonna to link to another video right here.